Hey, hello, this is Jim. I'm going to help with the infranodes question here. How do we make sure that uh, we're working infrastructure things like the ingress controller in OpenShift on non-subscribed uh, free uh, infranodes? And the first thing is I've got four worker nodes here. I need to label some of these infra and reserve them for OpenShift uh, or Red Hat workloads approved to run on, uh, on infranodes. So the first thing I want to do here is do some, some labeling. Now you note that they all carry a, a label now uh, of worker. But I'm going to tell it to two and three will be infra. I'll get those nodes again. And I see they're labeled uh, infra. And it's a good idea to label the other nodes uh, apps. You can label anything, anything to reserve or forbid workloads uh, to or from working on it. So here we are with our app and infra. Now, um, I am in a project here called OpenShift Ingress. This is a, a workload here uh, that I'm running is one of my key workloads that needs to be on one of my app worker nodes. And if I, uh, let's see, get pods, and do the O wide thing, I find out, oh, look, like it, it's running on worker three. In fact, um, I'm going to put this up to six. Six replicas. I can do this control line or as I, did, as I did here from the web GUI. Put a watch on it. Okay, so here I am. I'm running on worker 0, 3, and 3 on 2. Yeah, so I'm, I'm all over the place with this. And I really want these constrained to worker 0 and worker one. And there's another project here that should be on infra nodes, probably isn't. Open shift in ingress. And let's see where that is at. If I spell open shift with an E in it, it actually works. There we go. And these are running on worker zero one, so they're flippity flop from where they should be. First of all, um, in the documentation, we explain how to move infrastructure mach machines to infra uh, infrastructure workloads to infrastructure machines. So, uh, in the ingress controller, I can I can tell it I want a pod affinity for infra. So I will copy this. I will edit. Uh, this. Let me edit this first. And here's what it looks like. So here's my spec. I'm going to make a, a blank space here and I'll paste in the proper YAML. And let's see here. Got the spec. Node placement. Selector, match labels, infra. I'll re-edit to see if that took. It did. Let's uh, take a look at the pods here. Okay, so this is nice. Um, one of these pods is terminating. The other is going to the uh, and and is and is going to the worker three node. And in a moment, once this is up and going and running, taking on a workload. We'll cycle through these things, and then uh, it'll move from worker, you know, zero to to worker uh, perhaps two. There you go. So yeah, this just as I hoped it would be. Let's see how we're doing on my other workload, which is And these are running all over the place. So I'm going to ban oh, 
anything that's not supposed to be on infranodes from infranodes with a taint on those nodes. And let me go find my notes here so I don't waste your time. So now I'm going to taint workers three with uh, anything with this node, Kubernetes IO infra, to a node schedule by default. And now that worker two. Okay, and um, I don't have anything here on eviction. This is a no execute would evict these things, but it didn't know schedule. So what would what happen is if I were to delete these pods, they would get rescheduled to where they were supposed to be. So I'll also get pods and tell it to, I just want a name as an output. That gives me that. And I'll pipe that in to an argument for OC delete. And I'll take a moment. It's not happy to delete the last pod because that leaves the deployment with nothing to service it. Okay. And look, they're all on worker zero and worker one now. So, um, they came back to, to where they're supposed to be. And so everything is hunky-dory, I suppose, uh, except that if um, I go to my OpenShift Ingress project, they're, they're fine. But if something happened to one of those, Well, we have a node placement set. We don't have a toleration for the taint. So, yeah, I've deleted a, a pod here. It's terminating, but it can't schedule a replacement because it's scheduled with an affinity for worker three and four, but there's a taint working on three and four. So. I've just put myself into a situation. So I need to offset the toleration with the matching taint. And if you recall my toleration, it was to take that infra label and uh, make it no execute. I'm sorry, no schedule. Uh, now I need to edit. Let's see. I want to edit the uh, operator. And, uh, but in, uh, with my node placement, I want to put in a toler. Try this one more time. Did something wrong. Okay, now we got them both running on two and three. Anyway, that's the story on how to get the wor workloads running on the apps and to build tolerations into the operators to make sure that the Red Hat workloads are running in the right spot. Okay, the registry itself is running on worker zero. That's not where I want it. So I'm going to edit. The operator. Now where will my pod uh, information go here. So within the spec, 
I'll want an and this is a paste from the documentation. Okay. All right, that looks good. I'm back and check to see if that took. There it is, there's my pot of affinity. No C get pods wide. And my image registry is ter terminating. I only have one of one running, but it's terminating. Uh, but it's not going to be able to reschedule, nor is it actually really going to be able to stop. It's just going to stay in that terminating state. Oh, it didn't. It, it did stop, and now it's pending running somewhere else. But guess what? It can't run somewhere else in state. So now I need to build in tolerations. Kind of painted myself in a corner there. Go in here. And I'm going to build it uh, along with the node selector here. And here's the tolerations. Note it is going on now. The registry is going on worker three. So that worked. Good. Now there's the last category, and that's going to be the monitoring solution uh, the met and the metrics. So the documentation says in order to, to move this to infra nodes, we need to create a config fig map here. And um, this config map will describe where everything should go. Okay, so make this file. Copy that. If that config map will go into OpenShift monitoring, I can just copy that into the console. Uh, so that's, that's easy enough. So... Um, Let's go to my cluster, put a plus. Here's where I'm allowed just to take a, um, a YAML file, paste it in, and, and note that it. I always check to make sure it goes into the right namespace because uh, I can't say right here what namespace to put it in. Okay. So now what that's done is it specified all all these node selectors which are infra. And I just know we're going to have a problem with that when we apply it. Because, you know, who tainted the infra node? Cluster monitoring config. Okay, it is there. It is up. Now here's how we can watch to see what's going on in the space. Okay, here's one trying to run in worker three. It is running in worker three. Here's worker two. That's good. Those are the Nord exporters that are assigned to those nodes. But anything that has a choice in where it gets to run is on a 1 or a 0. And here's, this is all 1 and 0. The, the Prometheus has to be on the master. Okay, so um, here is an opera depending. It's trying to move over. But this is the first thing that's moving over, and it can't move over. So I need to build in the tolerance. Is there any tolerations? Edit the config map and put in tolerations. Well, that's nice. Cluster 
cluster monitoring config. All right, most of our work is showing up now on Now, still have to have the exporters on each node. So they're going to be on all the nodes. But all the discretionary stuff is now on uh, 2 and 3. That is how you do it.